So you're thinking about moving to Vancouver or somewhere here in Southwest Washington, but you know you need more information before you make that final decision on whether or not you're gonna move here. Well, if that sounds like you, then stick around today because we're gonna take a deep dive into the pros and cons of living here in Southwest Washington. So from good schools to bad weather, we're gonna cover it all. So stick around. What's up everybody? I'm Rick Anderson with Anderson Homes Group and eXp Realty and this is the Living in Southwest Washington channel, your go-to for information on relocating to Southwest Washington. Thanks for checking out the channel. We got some good stuff for you today and we're going to get right into it real quick though before we do. Do me a huge favor if you would hit that like button. It lets me know you guys are liking the content that I'm putting out so I can focus more on the stuff you guys like and not the stuff that you don't like consider subscribing to the channel and tap that notification bell if you wanna know the next time I put out a new video. All right, now I'm a bad news first kind of guy, so we're gonna start the video off with the cons. So number one on the cons list has to be the weather. So this is probably one of the biggest things people complain about, about life here in the Pacific Northwest in general. Um, and it's, it's one of those things that depending on who you ask, you're either going to get one extreme or the other as far as answers. It's either going to be the weather's not too bad or it's going to be the weather's horrible, it sucks. So I kind of land somewhere in the middle. So I've spent a lot of time in places where, you know, we're talking sub-zero, you know, serious sub-zero temperatures in the weather like negative 50, negative 60, stuff like that. We don't get that here. So... You know, worst that we usually get in the winter time is probably like in the teens. Um, but you know, we do get cold temperatures in the winter. We do get snow. We do get ice. Um, we get a lot of rain. So you know, Washington, it's the evergreen state. So obviously, you know, to keep everything green, you got to have the rain. So the rainy season here. I would generally say is going to run anywhere from about mid to late October all the way through to the end of June. So right now, you know, we're, I'm shooting this video. It's, uh, you know, it's near, it's June 21st. So we're near the end of June. Uh, today's sunny. It's great. It's nice. It's beautiful. The last three or four days, it has been cloudy, rainy, overcast, dreary, um, this morning when I got up and went to the gym, it was foggy, uh, a little bit on the cooler side, but not bad. Uh, so that's kind of what you can expect as far as rain goes. Now, I think when it comes to the weather, one of the, you know, one of the big ones that people complain about is the gray skies, the dreariness. Um, you know, there's a ton of people here that get the seasonal affective disorder where, you know, come fall and winter, boom, they are just sad, they're miserable. So if you need sunny 70 temperature constantly year round, this is not the place for you. Uh, summer times here, you know, they're, they're pretty good, but the last few years we've been seeing some really hot temperatures. A couple years ago we had temperatures up into like 119, which, you know, is practically unheard of for this area. It sucked. I was doing open houses that day, and I swear to God, I was. It looked like I had just come straight from the gym. I was drenched in sweat. It was disgusting. So we are seeing a lot more days like that. So you know, summer times you're definitely going to want AC. I've lived with it. I've lived without it. Don't want to ever live without it again. Now the weather is by far the most often question that I get asked by the folks that I help move here. Now, if you have any questions about moving here that I don't cover in today's video, or you want me to help you with finding your new home here in Southwest Washington, feel free to reach out anytime, call, text, email, schedule that Zoom call. There's a link in the description down below for it. You guys know how to get a hold of me and I love hearing from you. So don't be afraid to reach out. All right, now on to con number two. So con number two on my list is gonna be the cost of living here. Now, when it comes to cost of living, I'm kind of encompassing a lot of different things. We've got property taxes, uh, home prices, rental prices, food prices, gas prices, and they all just keep going up. So 
when it comes to gas prices. We are, the last time I checked, I think we were are like in the top five highest gas prices in the nation. So that is something that we always wind up having to deal with here. So gas prices, housing prices, they keep going up. Uh, the median sales price right now, I think, is somewhere a little over 500000 um, I want to say it's like between five to 525 something like that. Um, you know, home prices keep going up. One thing I keep seeing when I'm doing home searches, uh, especially when I'm cruising through Zillow, I am seeing a lot more properties that are listed at a million and above. So, Philida area, Camas area, a lot of high priced homes, property taxes, that's another big one, especially here in Clark County. Clark County loves to hit you with the property taxes. I was just hearing from another, uh, from a friend of mine who's another agent here in the area. Um, she had some clients that reached out to her because their assessed value skyrocketed this year. She went and checked her property tax billing, same thing. Uh, it looks like there was just a huge reassessment in this area and most people with property, their values just went like that. Food prices. That's another big one. Obviously, I'm a big dude. I love my food. I love to cook. I've got a teenager that loves to eat. I've got a little one that loves to eat and a wife that loves to cook. So we're constantly going through food. And our grocery bill, holy shit. It is outrageous now. So we used to be able to get, uh, like when we buy eggs, we buy eggs by the five dozen. And we usually are buying like two or three at a time. Probably about a year ago, that five dozen was right around seven bucks. I've seen them as high as 18 in the area here. So depending on how many people you're feeding, depending on how much you like to eat, you could be spending out, a, could be shelling out a lot of money on food. Next up on my list is gonna be government, whether it's local government, state government. There is a lot of bureaucratic red tape and bullshit that goes on here in this state and in this area. Now, I love Washington State, but I hate Washington State politics. So, like I say, when it comes, you know, I'm, when I'm talking politics and government issues, I'm talking about just about everything. Now, there are some areas that are better than others. So, Cowlitz County, for example, when it comes to permitting, you know, land use, what you're able to do with your property, Cowlitz County is so much more flexible than Clark County, it's ridiculous. Um, you know, and then when we start getting into things like statewide, you look at everything that went on through COVID, um, you know, all the mandates and everything. There's a lot of government overreach in this state uh, in general with, you know, with uh, certain people that are currently in office. Obviously, I don't want to get this to be too political, but you know, that is one of the issues that we're facing right now in this state is a lot of overreach, a lot of trampling on rights. That is one of the biggest reasons why I'm seeing a lot of people leaving Washington is they are sick and tired of the political bullshit in this state. All right, next up on the list, we've got the traffic. So for years, traffic in this area really wasn't too bad. You had a few little hotspot areas. You had uh, I-5 South going into Portland. You had the morning rush hour. That always has sucked. It still sucks. Um, now it's it's gotten a lot worse over the years. So I went. I used to work in Portland. I went to college in Portland, and I used to have to sit through all of that. And it just seems like every time I'm going into Portland traffic is always backed up. It doesn't matter if it's the weekday, weekend, whatever, traffic is always horrible. That's just one spot. You've got a lot of other spots throughout the area that it's getting worse. So like downtown Battleground with the amount of growth that's going on out there, constant road construction that's going on, uh, constant construction projects just about everywhere because there's so much growth in this area that you know, we're having to expand roads, you know, rebuild roads, things like that, you know, widen them. And so there's construction going on everywhere. 
So another big issue when it comes to traffic and congestion is stupid, shitty drivers. So for a long time, there's been rivalry between Oregon and Washington about which state has the worst drivers. I'm here to tell you, both states have more than their fair share of idiot drivers. So we live in an area where it rains a lot. And if you guys remember basic drivers, you know, driver's ed 101, when it first rains, water hits the road, all those oils come up, everything starts getting slick. And for whatever reason, that's the day where the alarm goes off on all the idiot drivers' phones that they need to get out on the road and start driving like a madman. So that's when we start seeing a lot of wrecks, people that are just driving way too fast for conditions, not, you know, not watching when they're changing lanes, just horrible drivers. I notice it more and more now than I ever did. Maybe it's just like the cranky old man in me coming out. The older I get, the more stupid I see how some people are when they're behind the wheel. Um, whatever it is, that is something that you are going to have to contend with living here in the Pacific Northwest. So another big issue, it hasn't happened yet, but it's going to be a big issue. They've been working on it for years and it's the I-5 bridge replacement. So the bridge that spans the Columbia River going from Washington to Oregon along Interstate 5, it's old. It needs replacing. They've been working on it for years uh, in between you know, the two states, Oregon and Washington. Uh, a while ago, some plans got scrapped. They're working on new ones now. But the big issues that I foresee are going to you know, be the problems are you're going to have all the issues during construction. Then you're going to have the tolling that they plan on imposing on I-5. And then from what I've heard, they're eventually planning on tolling 205. So one way or the other, you're going to wind up paying money going back and forth from Oregon to Washington. Now, there's a lot of people that live in Washington and work in Oregon. I used to do it. I don't like paying tolls. I don't know about you guys, but that is something that's going to be coming down the pipe. So... Be aware of that. That's going to be a big issue. It's going to cause a lot of traffic congestion, and there's a lot of pissed off people not wanting to be told just to cross the river. All right, so next up on the list, and this is one I'm going to try and be sensitive while still being real about things, but it's the homeless situation. So we do have a pretty bad homeless situation in this area. So we get a lot of, in Vancouver, we get a lot of spillover from Portland. Portland has very homeless friendly policies um, and with the mild climate that we generally have throughout the year this area here in the Willamette Valley it's a fairly homeless friendly uh, environment so one of the things that you're going to see here in Vancouver is you're going to find a lot of homeless camps around the freeways well one of the reasons for that especially along I-5 so Oregon has their bottle redemption policy so you know, you look at the top of a pop can or whatever, you know, you see the different state initials and then how much, you know, you can get back when you redeem it. So there is one of those bottle redemption facilities right across the I-5 bridge in Portland. So it's real convenient uh, to just cut across the river from Washington over into Oregon for all the homeless folks and go redeem cans and stuff like that to make a little bit of money. Even though, you know, we normally see a lot down there, I'm starting to see a lot more camps migrating north up into the Hazeldale, Salmon Creek area, and I've even seen some as far north as Ridgefield. So that is one thing that you need to be aware of. You know, if you're looking at buying a home here in the area, we do have a homeless problem. Now, you know, the local governments, they are doing stuff to try and help it. But like I said, it's not going to be an overnight fix. So... Definitely one thing I would recommend if you are thinking about moving here, come to the area first, drive around any potential areas that you're thinking about moving to, talk with your realtor, ask them where the you know where a lot of the homeless camps are, what you know what I'm used to seeing. Um, you know, one of the things that we see with them is they migrate, so they'll get kicked out of one property um, and then you know, move across the street to another one, stuff like that. So, re, you know, like I say, if you have any questions, reach out, happy to help you with it. All right, moving on. Now, I don't know how much of 
the of a con this really is, but for some people it probably is. Um, and it's the lack of nightlife here. So in Vancouver, Southwest Washington in general, we don't really have a lot of nightlife. There's not a lot of clubs, things like that. Mostly what you're going to find here is you're going to find bars with live music, things like that. Um, now that we've got the A&A Casino up in Ridgefield that does a lot of major events, you know, we've got concerts and things like that up there. Um, you know, they've got bigger shows and then they've got smaller, like free shows that they do in there. Um, so that's kind of a source of entertainment nightlife. But I mean, it's a casino. It's the main point is for you to come in and gamble and spend your money. Um, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of what we have in Vancouver, it's going to be, you know, restaurants, bars with live music, things like that. We used to have some clubs in Vancouver. Um, now obviously, well, I mean, I don't know. It might not be obvious, but I'm not a club guy. I'm, you know, I'm a family dude. I stay at home with the wife and kids. That's our thing. That's our happy place. So, but, um, uh, yeah, as far as a club scene, Sorry, we are fresh out here in Vancouver. If you want that, you're going to have to cross over the river to Portland. Now, depending on, you know, how much clubbing you actually do, it still may be beneficial living here in Vancouver. And then you can just cross over, you know, take an Uber over into Portland, whatever, and go get your clubbing on. Um, my club days are long, long gone. And they really weren't there for that much to begin with. So moving on all right so this next one is one that i get asked about quite a bit and it has to do with the amount of diversity in the area now i'm not a sociologist so i really don't want to get too much into it other than just what you know the census figures say but yes this area here southwest washington vancouver in particular is is a predominantly white area it's about 76 percent white um with you know a smaller portion of different ethnicities things like that um you know accounting for the rest of the area now generally the way i look at things i don't care skin color what you believe in whatever come here be cool everybody's happy live your best life um but there yeah there are people here in this area that you know there's racist dicks everywhere this place is no exception, but yeah, you will find it here, and you will find it. Uh, you still you run a better chance of finding people like that in the more rural areas. Not to say that everybody that lives in a rural area is a racist dick, so don't take it like that. But you know, I think you guys kind of get the picture. So with that, we're gonna move on to the next one. All right. So next up on the list, uh, it, it is one that you know you should be aware of, be prepared for. But it's natural disasters. Um, so we live, if you think back to, you know, grade school geography, we live in an area known as the Ring of Fire. So we have the Cascade Mountain Range, which has, you know, Mount St. Helens, uh, which is the most recent volcanic eruption, I believe, uh, in the contiguous United States, uh, which, you know, just right up the road from here. So, but we also have Mount Adams, Mount Hood, which are also volcanoes and could erupt. Uh, we have earthquakes. You know, we're right along the Cascadia subduction zone. So there's been, you know, predictions for years about a major earthquake here. Um, don't know when or if it'll happen, but something to be prepared for. Uh, we also have, you know, your more common natural disasters like flooding. Flooding is definitely not uncommon here. City of Woodland, going back to, I think it was 94, 96, major flooding down there. Uh, so, you know, that's one to be aware of. But, and we also get thing, you know, kind of the oddball ones like the occasional tornado. So you wouldn't really think of that for the Pacific Northwest. But yeah, we do get the occasional tornado here. Um, usually when we get them, they're not that big. They're not that bad. Uh, but we have had some ones, you know, over the years that have done a decent bit of damage. I don't think they've killed anybody, but so it's something to be aware of. Again, I don't think it's really something that should make you write off Southwest Washington, but it is something to be prepared for. So last up on my list of cons, we've got schools. So when it comes to schools, 
it's kind of a mixed bag because we've got some really good schools in the area and we've got some kind of piss poor schools in the area. Now, one thing that I experienced, especially through COVID, and then now seeing the standardized testing results, um, you know, not only with my own kids, but also with, you know, the state reporting numbers, education really took a dump because of the way education had to be handled during COVID. Now, I'm not blaming teachers for that. I'm not blaming parents for that. I was one of those parents sitting at home trying to do kindergarten with my five-year-old at the time. Um, so I get how frustrating it was for people. Uh, I get that people did their best, but I also know that it was not the most conducive learning environment for most kids. Uh, and unfortunately, those numbers are reflected in the state testing figures. Now, I'm going to drop a link in the bottom below to um, the OSP website. It's the Office of the Superintendent of Public Instruction, where you can go on there and you can check out the report cards for every school district and every school in the state of Washington. So if you're thinking about moving here I highly and you've got kids, I highly recommend going to that website, checking out those figures for yourself. So you can, you know, find out which district you would want to see put your kids in. Uh, you know, when it comes to schools, we're also kind of limited here in Southwest Washington as far as higher education. So we have one local community college uh, here in Vancouver. There's a second one up in Longview. Uh, and then we have WSU Vancouver. You know, we got two community colleges and one university. Now you can find more universities when you go over into Portland. Um, but that's kind of, that's what we have here in Southwest Washington. So we're a little bit limited on that. All right, now that I'm done crapping on this place, let's move on to some positive stuff. All right, number one on my list of pros is going to be the natural beauty of the Pacific Northwest. So not just Southwest Washington, but the Pacific Northwest in general is a beautiful place to live. So I've spent a lot of time in places like Montana, Alaska, North Dakota, and Washington is by far in my tops. Now, I love Montana. There's some beautiful places out there, but I love the mix in Washington. You've got oceans, you've got mountains, rivers, streams. Uh, you know, you can go over to eastern Washington and you've got high desert areas. So there is just a ton of natural beauty up here in Washington, but also here in southwest Washington. All right, moving along with our next pro, and that is there is no state income tax in Washington. Washington is one of only eight states that has no state income tax. Now, there's a lot of people that work in Oregon and live in Washington. There are potentially some ways to go about not having to pay state income tax in Oregon you need to talk with your employer and your tax professional for that. I am neither, so don't ask me, but look into it if that's your situation. I did it for years working in Oregon, paying Oregon state income tax and getting no benefit from it. Um, so I highly encourage you, if you are thinking about moving here, you're gonna be working in Portland, um, but living in Washington, definitely look into that and see if that's something that you would be eligible for. All right, moving right along, we're going to get back to the weather. So I had weather as a con, but it's also going to be a pro. And the reason why it's going to be both is because we have a very mild climate here in southwest Washington. Now, not everywhere in Washington is created equal when it comes to the weather. One of the reasons why we have such a mild climate here, in here in the Vancouver area, we're tucked into what's known as the Willamette Valley. So we are down between the Coast Range Mountains and the Cascade Range Mountains, and right here in the middle is Vancouver and Portland. So the Coast Range Mountains blocks out a lot of the you know weather coming in off the coast, and same over here you know with the Cascade Range Mountains. So for us, generally winters don't get too bad. You know we still get the rain, but we don't get you know harsh high plains, you know cold temperatures like that they see over in eastern Washington. Uh, we don't get a ton of snow. You know, if you get higher up into the elevation, yeah, you can find snow, 
but down here in the valley floor and even upwards, I would say 500 to 1,000 feet, it usually doesn't get too bad. Now we do have some years where we just get dumped on and we might get two feet of snow on the valley floor, but that is not the norm. All right, so next up on my list, and it's this is a big one for me, and it's the closeness to the metro area. Now, I am a country person at heart. I don't like being in the city, but there are a lot of things that we don't have here in Southwest Washington and the Vancouver area that you will be able to find just across the river over in Portland. One of the big ones for me is I love to travel, and luckily for us, we've got one of the... Uh, top rated airports in the country with PDX right across the river. You know, if there's specialty stores that you know you're looking for, like a big one for me, outdoors guy, Cabela's. Uh, we've got a Cabela's down in Tualatin, about a half hour from here uh, where I'm at. Otherwise, the next closest one is about an hour and a half drive north. Um, so stuff like that. Uh, we've all there's also you know entertainment options that are important that we just don't have here in the Vancouver area. So we've got um, the Moda Center and the Memorial Coliseum for large concerts. Plus you know we got the Portland Trailblazers, uh, other sporting events that they have in Portland, but that we don't have here in the Southwest Washington area. So being close to that metro area is really helpful if you like enjoying those kinds of things, but you don't want to live in the city. All right, next up on the list of pros, and it's going to be the crime rate. So even though, you know, you can go online and search Vancouver crime rate, and it's going to look incredibly high, when you compare it to our neighbor next door, Portland, it's much lower. Now, generally speaking, um, because as far as the facts and figures, it can be really hard finding truly up-to-date facts and figures on the crime rate, which areas are better, which areas are worse. Um, but generally speaking, Vancouver really is a pretty safe city. Uh, Southwest Washington as a whole is a pretty safe area. And next up on the list, we have the job market. So there is a lot going on here in Southwest Washington. So we have the Alene Casino, which just finished their hotel expansion. We have uh, a lot of healthcare options in this area. Uh, the Vancouver Clinic just opened its new clinic slash outpatient hospital uh, here in the Salmon Creek area. Um, you know, we've got uh, the trades is is a big one. Most this that's actually one that I run into a lot. Uh, whenever we have, you know, issues with a property or something like that, that, you know, we need to get a specialist out for to get a bid. Just about every trade is so, uh, they're so far backlog on jobs that it can be sometimes a two to three week wait just to get an estimate on something. Uh, you know, when I was doing some research for this, looking at some of the, uh, you know, trades jobs just for like an electrician, for a journeyman electrician, you can be looking at upwards of over 50 bucks an hour uh, for a journeyman electrician, you know, along with, you know, having to take home vehicle, uh, you know, service van, things like that. So we have a really good job market here in Southwest Washington. So depending on what you're looking for, there's probably going to be something available for you here. All right, next up on the list is that this is a very family friendly area. So we have a lot going on here for families here in Southwest Washington. We've got good neighborhoods, good schools, nice clean parks. Um, you know, there's different family activity centers, like there's uh, Sky Zone, there's Kids Club. Now, granted, that's mostly for the kids to run around and just be crazy and, uh, you know, let off steam. But, you know, it's there. Um, I believe the a a Casino in their new hotel, they have a... Um, like a big family arcade center kind of thing in there. Um, but, you know, like I say, parks, um, you know, picnic areas, all sorts of stuff like that. There are plenty of things for families to do here. Um, there's community events, you know, movie theaters, all sorts of stuff. So, you know, if you're thinking about relocating here and you've got kids, this is definitely a family-friendly area. 
um, and there are tons of great you know great neighborhoods um, a lot of in a lot of cases like Ridgefield with every new neighborhood that they do uh, I believe it's a requirement that they have they have to build at least one neighborhood park in that development so just about everywhere you look like in Ridgefield every neighborhood's gonna have a park pretty much so it definitely is a very family friendly area um, so if you're thinking about relocating here, you know, with kids, things like that, or, you know, thinking about down the road, having kids one day, uh, it's, it's a really great place for that. All right. Next up, I think it's number eight on the list and we've got outdoor recreation. So this is a, this is a big one for me. I'm a big outdoors guy. Um, we have just about everything for outdoor lovers here that you could think of. We've got, you know, tons of places for camping, hiking. We've got the Pacific Crest Trail that runs, you know, through the area in the Columbia River Gorge um, and up through the Cascade Mountains. Uh, fishing. You can actually get paid to fish here. I think last year the top earner in the program that I'm talking about, and if you're curious about it, reach out, let me know, I'll explain more to you. Um, but the top earner for 2022 uh, in the program that I'm talking about made almost 70 G's. So not bad for spending your days out on the water. Um, but you know, hunting, we've got, you know, if you like exploring caves, we've got that. We've got, uh, you know, multiple wildlife refuges to just go out and watch the wildlife, uh, shooting up in the hills, or there's several outdoor ranges, um, in the area that, you know, you can join or go to. We've got the Columbia River Gorge for windsurfing, biking trails, um, horseback riding down along the Columbia River or, you know, up in the hills in the Cascades. That's one of the things that I did as a kid growing up. Built, I don't even know how many miles of trails up in the, you know, up in the foothills of the Cascades. Um, you've got ATV riding out at, um, you know, Jones Creek outside of Washougal. So there are endless, literally endless outdoor recreation opportunities for you here in Southwest Washington. Moving on to number nine on the list, and that's going to be healthcare options. So we have a ton of healthcare options here in Southwest Washington. So we have two major uh, community hospitals. We've got Legacy Salmon Creek uh, here in the Salmon Creek area, and we also have Peace Health Southwest Washington, which is also a local level two trauma center. Um, numerous clinics all throughout the area. And then right across the river over into Portland, we have more major healthcare systems. We have OHSU, which is Oregon Health Sciences University. Uh, yeah, there's there's just too many uh, too many to name. Uh, but so there are a ton of healthcare options in the area. Now that's that's one that I've been asked about, um, you know, by some clients because maybe they've been looking into like living out in the country, but they still want to be close enough to healthcare options. We have a ton of healthcare options here. All right, guys, last on my list for you, and that's going to be diversity with the housing options. So really here in Southwest Washington, whether you're looking at Vancouver, Camas, Longview, Kelso, whatever it is, we pretty much have something for everyone. So if you want to be in the middle of it all, we've got waterfront condos in downtown Vancouver that'll blow your mind. If you want to be in a suburb, we've got more than I can even count. Uh, if you want to be out in the sticks on property, we've got it everywhere. Uh, you know, if you want to be in the heart of an older city in, you know, in a classic home, there is so much urban revitalization going on all throughout the different areas. We pretty much have something for every taste here in Southwest Washington. So no matter what it is you're looking for, we're probably going to have an option for you here. All right, guys, thanks for sticking it out with me to the end here. I really hope you got some good information from today's video. If you did, do me a big favor. Hit that like button. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Consider subscribing to the channel and tap that notification bell so you know the next time I put out a new video. And if you want to talk one-on-one -on -one about your plans to relocate here to Southwest Washington, you guys know how to get a hold of me. Reach out anytime. Call, text, email, schedule that Zoom call. I love hearing from you guys, so don't be afraid to reach out. 
that's going to wrap it up for today. So until next time, bye everybody.